morning. Give yourselves a hand, okay? Very good, very good, very good, very good. 200 years together. Wow, that's just such a powerful statement. 200 years together. We've come this far together. Think about that. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, former generations of Gunnersville first, and today you, the present generation of Gunnersville First United Methodist Church. We have come this far together. 200 years, a work of mission, a work of ministry to the community and to the world. We call that Gunnersville First United Methodist Church. Reaching out into Gunnersville, Marshall County, Alabama, the United States, and the world. And we're going to talk about how that works as we share our thoughts this morning. I have two verses I want to share with you from Philippians chapter 1 that I think just kind of encapsulates the message for the day and and really speaks to us a powerful word of God but also a challenge. You see, I love to hear the word of God in power. Paul talked about preaching the word in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Aren't you glad this morning that you believed a gospel with power? The power to save your soul. The power to change your destiny to eternal life with Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. I don't want to serve a powerless Lord, a powerless Savior, or a powerless Holy Spirit. And I'm so glad this morning we don't have to do that. Because God comes with life-changing, miracle-working power. And you might remember from Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power to be my witnesses To this community, beyond the community, and to the world. So what God has been doing, He has been doing in and through the church since that beautiful, wonderful day in the upper room in Acts chapter 2 where Holy Spirit came and empowered the church to do what we've been doing for almost 2,000 years now. Proclaiming the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to a lost world that needs to hear good news. Have you listened to the news lately on television? Don't boo and hiss. But how much good news did you hear? Hey, that's all the more the reason why we as the church, the body of Christ, need to be in the community, need to be in the workplace, need to be at Walmart, need to be wherever we need to be, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ because the world needs to hear some good news and His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. And because we play a role and have a responsibility in the sharing of that good news, Paul writes these words in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, verse 28. Talking about the church that's out in the community. Y'all ever get out in the community? Yes, you do. So God is talking to us this morning, right? Speaking to the church that's out in the community in the world. Paul says, only... Let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that from God. God. May God add His richest blessings to the reading of His Word. Conduct. Our conduct should be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How's your conduct lately? Pause. About five seconds and just reflect over the past few days. 
Even this morning when you were getting kids or grandkids ready for church. How is your conduct? When I was blessed to be the pastor at Rainbow City First United Methodist Church, I had a gentleman named Larry Etchison in the church who would walk up behind me. I'm not suspecting anything. He would walk up behind me. He would get right close to my right ear and he would say, not loudly, but strongly, how's your conduct? Now, this is the church member asking the pastor, how's your conduct? And I, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to think. What, what is he talking about? So I took it literally. How's your conduct? And I thought, now, I'm new here. And if you're a new pastor at a church, you don't want to mess up just right off the bat. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking a thousand miles an hour in my head in about three seconds. And I thought, I'm going to answer with a letter grade like you get at school. And I said, I think today it's an A minus. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And I, whew, I thought, wow, I passed that test. You know, those, those church members will put those new pastors to the test. Y'all wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Y'all wouldn't know anything about that. So, so a little bit later on into the week, maybe the next week, he did it again. He walked up behind me. He spoke into my right ear. How's your conduct? And I thought for a minute, and I said, well, brother, I might be on a B- minus today in a downhill slide. Because I'm new, I'm learning things weren't the best that day, but I was trying to be honest. How's my conduct? I want to tell you how my conduct is. And today it's a B minus. How's your conduct today, church? Did you get an A already, a B, a C, a D? You know, I gave myself some A's, maybe a C or two, but I never gave myself an F. Because you know what? Our conduct has to be that which is worthy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But you know what I did? I turned the tables on him. And I walked up behind him one day and I said, Larry, how's your conduct? And he just, he just paused. He didn't know what to think. He didn't know what to do. And he said, well, today is probably a B. I said, wow, okay, that's not too bad. You've got room for work, so we'll be praying that you can move that B up to an A. But you know what? That tells me something. I never really asked Larry why he asked me that question, but it did tell me something anyway without even asking. And that something is people are watching our conduct. People are watching our conduct. And when you name yourself a member, a participant at Gunnersville First United Methodist Church, now not only are they watching your conduct, but they're watching your conduct as a member of Gunnersville First United Methodist Church. So whatever you say, whatever you do at Walmart, in the community, in the parking lot, at the ballpark. <laughs> amen. Somebody's watching, somebody's listening. And Paul challenges the early church to make sure that your conduct is worthy of the gospel of Christ. And why is that so? Because our public conduct builds our reputation in the community. Every one of you to some degree has a reputation in this community. One of the things that I pick up on early on about Pastor Ricky is church members and then later on people in the community say, you don't preach like a Methodist. You preach more like a Baptist or a Pentecostal. And I said, well, I hope that's okay. Yeah, that's good. We like that. And I said, well, maybe I'm a Methabapticostal. And uh, I just like the Holy Spirit pouring through everything. Amen. But our public conduct is what builds the reputation we have in the community as individuals but also as a church. So the community is watching our conduct as individuals, as church members, but also as a church at large. Now then, our conduct is what builds our reputation. And what did Paul say? I am going to be listening. So I'm praying for you that your conduct will be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that your reputation would be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ in this community, in this world, both as members of this church and as a collective body called Gunnersville First United Methodist Church. 
So you know what I like to do as the current senior pastor of this church? When you people start attending the church and they say, Pastor Ricky, I want, I want to join Gunnersville first. What I need to do? I say, you need to make an appointment with me. Because I want to sit down with you and I want to hear about your salvation experience and your spiritual journey. And I tell every one of them, I look so forward to these moments. And I really, really do. And if you've been with me here lately, some of you who have joined the church recently, you know, you heard me say that. I just love these meetings because I really do. And when we sit down, there's two questions I ask them. Right off the bat, and the first question is, what brought you to Gunnersville First United Methodist Church? Why are you here? And the top answers that I receive are, I have heard that this community, this church helps the community. That this church is a mission-minded church. Church, and if people need help, they can go to Gunnersville first. Aren't you glad this morning that the community knows this church loves the community? So much so, we put our money in our actions where our mouth is. We don't just say we love the Lord in the community. We reach out and say, how can we help you? How can we bless you? If you have a struggle, if you have a need, let us know. We're going to be praying for you. We're going to be loving on you. We're going to be the church God has called us to be. I heard that this church reaches out into the community and touches and blesses Hearts and lives. You know, something else that I hear often, 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 often. Gunnersville First has the best daycare preschool around. Maybe that's why we have 80 to 100 on the waiting list. But you know what? We don't really look at it as a daycare preschool. That's what it is. But we look at it as a ministry. And we address it as a ministry. And and we make sure even at a young age, those children are hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. Because you know as well as I do, not every one of those children go home to a home that's a Christ-filled home. Or a Christ-honoring home. So where would those children hear the good news if it were not at Gunnersville first? Mm -mm -mm. And then another one that I hear a lot is, I heard that Gunnersville First was a loving, welcoming church. And I said, well, how was your experience? Oh, Pastor Ricky, let me tell you. And you do not have to prompt. You give them the opportunity to talk and tell you what their experience at Gunnersville First was. It pours Like a faucet, when you turn on the knob, it just flows and pours and moves. And I I was recently over at at, at Brian and Debbie Stone's house visiting for a little bit. And I'm going to pick on them today because they're not here. They told me they weren't going to be here, but maybe they'll watch it online. So I'm going to pick on them. And I'm going to pick on somebody else here too. And I believe you are here. I stopped and I visited with them. And they've been members for a little while. But I want to tell you, Brian, and if you know Brian, Brian is in a wheelchair. And he sits back by the sound booth, giving great supervision over to those in the sound booth. And they begin to talk about the warm reception they have received at Gunnersville First. How that Debbie was welcomed into the choir. And and, and there on Wednesday nights when Brian is able to come, everybody that walks by him stops and says hello. And he called out a name in particular, Jimmy Word. And said, I have to tell you, Pastor Ricky, the first time I met Jimmy Word, he made me feel so welcomed and so loved. He walked over and said, tell me something about yourself. And he gave me an opportunity to speak. And he listened. And he finished that conversation with, Brian, I'm just proud to know you. Oh my goodness. What a reception in the Gunnersville First United Methodist Church. So I asked that question first. What brought you here? And then I asked the question, what kept you here? And every one of them gives the same answer. What I heard was true. 
what I heard was true. That's what got me here. That's what kept me here. What I heard was true. I saw the church reaching out to adults with special needs through Night to Shine. I saw people of the church joining together with other churches in the community and reaching out with a food dropping and providing groceries to anybody that showed up. No pre-qualification. You show up, you open the door, and we're going to fill you full of groceries. I saw the church putting together Christmas shoe boxes and, and sending them out across the blue water. That means it's beyond our nation. I saw the church putting on vacation Bible school and advertising it in the community and welcoming our neighborhood children in. I saw the church doing Feed My Sheep and preparing tens of thousands of meals in one evening and sending them to faraway places where people don't have access to food like we do. I saw the church having a fall festival, inviting the people of the community to bring their children and come and have a small, simple meal in the love and the grace and the glory of Jesus Christ and I saw the church going out into the community after working hard all week and taking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Thanksgiving meals to people in the community who may not have a Thanksgiving blessing without those meals oh I saw the church making sure the community remembered the real reason for the season of Christmas, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the church hosts night in Bethlehem and the community comes to see that little baby Jesus in the manger and that big camel at the end. And not only that, Pastor Ricky, but I have heard and learned that this church supports seven foreign missionaries and mission groups. Seven! Eleven local ministries and missions to the community. I saw the church reach out. But Pastor Ricky, not just that. I saw the church as they reached in. And they loved their members. And they provided opportunity for discipleship. I saw the church being intentional about providing multiple worship opportunities, multiple service opportunities, and so much more. That's why I stayed. Because what I heard was true. And so much more. So church, I would believe... That our conduct has been such that our reputation in the community as a church is worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? So Paul said, with those thoughts in mind, stand fast for the gospel. What does it mean to stand fast? It means you have planted your feet on the firm foundation of the rock of Jesus Christ and the church he has built there, and you refuse to move away from that rock. You refuse to move away from that gospel. You know as well as I do, the world today wants to water the gospel down to the point you can see through it like water. But that's not a powerful gospel, a rich gospel. This is the gospel we'll take to the community and the world. Amen? Amen. You see, the power in that burst a balloon up on the wall. That's how powerful it is. You wonder, what, see, there it is. You're wondering why the balloons are popping. We serve a powerful Savior with a powerful message. It's the gospel of Jesus. So... As we stand fast, we need each other's help. And he said, be of one spirit. We have a kindred spirit because Holy Spirit lives in every believer. And Holy Spirit gives us that kindred spirit that connects us together. That's how I can meet you today, talk to you for five minutes, and feel like I've known you forever. It's that kindred spirit of God's kindred, God's spirit. Paul said, be of one spirit, but of one mind. 
Now then, can I ask you an honest question? How many opinions do you have? (laughs) You know, you can put... Ten people in a room together around a table, and you've got 13 or more opinions. I have two or three or four or five myself sometimes. And have you ever argued with yourself? Yes, you have. I will not ask for a show of hands. I know you have. So anyway, one mind. The one-mindedness is going to come from the one-spiritedness we have from the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit can change your mind when nobody else can. Can you say amen? Yes, and Holy Spirit draws us together as one church body and draws us together in one mind. And that one mind expressed so beautifully and wonderfully well is right here on the front of your bulletin. And we say it often, Gunnersville First is helping people become devoted and contagious followers of Jesus Christ. That is our one spirit and our one mind being the church In the community. And then Paul said something, and here's where we land the plane. You ever sit out there and you say, Preacher, you need to land the plane? It's getting close to lunch. My stomach's growling, my mind's drifting. Need to land the plane. In conclusion, and in conclusion, Pastor, you've already given us two conclusions. It's time to land the plane. All right, we're going down to the runway. Paul said, Not in any way terrified. By your adversaries. Do you know this morning that there are enemies of the church? Enemies of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The devil first and foremost does not want your child, your grandchild, your husband, your wife, your mom, your dad, your co-worker. The enemy does not want them to come to faith in Jesus Christ. He is trying his best to keep them blinded from the truth of the good news of Jesus. So that they won't know the forgiveness of sins. They won't know the fullness of the Holy Spirit. They won't know that new beginning and that new life they have in Christ Jesus. Because if you find out, what are you going to do? You're going to go tell somebody else. And somebody else is going to want the same. So the enemy's working hard to hold back, to hold down the church. And he said, there's going to be enemies out there. And if you live as a Christian, you're going to encounter those people because they don't like what you're living. They don't like what you're sharing. They may even come against you in a very firm and strong way. And Paul just kind of summarizes it like this. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Afraid to be the church. Don't be afraid to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to be a Christian. I am not afraid to be a Christian. Say that with me. I am not afraid to be a Christian. One more time loud. I am not afraid to be a Christian. In this world, in this life, in this community. It was because people were not afraid to be Christians that this church has stood in Gunnersville 200 years. And if we want to see 200 more, it's because this generation was not afraid to be a Christian. We arrived at this moment together. We will go forward together for the glory of God. God working through our presence, our prayers, our service, our gifts, and our witness of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. What has brought us thus far will take us forward together. May the Lord be exalted. May the name of Jesus Christ be lifted up. May the gospel be spread to the ends of the earth. May the Holy Spirit work mightily in and through Gunnersville first, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We have a worship song. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. You know what? There would, that, <laughs> there would nothing make this day any better than someone give their heart to Jesus. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, and God has spoken something to you that would compel you to say, Pastor Ricky, I want Jesus. As we sing, I'm right here. I'd love to pray with you, love to pray for you. If today is your day, just please know that God 
loves you. Stand with us as we sing.